One week after Russia invaded Ukraine, Ukraine's fierce resistance has united the West like never before. The US and Europe have announced a number of sanctions, including kicking Russia out of the SWIFT banking system. These sanctions are a double-edged sword that could hurt Russia as well as the global economy. However, what the West should look out for is the stealthy actions by the CCP, which suffer fewer consequences from this conflict. First, the Russian-Ukraine crisis has an immediate impact on global commodity markets. Fears of reduced or disrupted supplies have led to price hikes of key agricultural commodities as well as industrial staples. It has added to the global inflation pressures. Russia is a significant producer and exporter of both oil and gas. The BP Statistical Yearbook of World Energy 2021 reports that Russia accounted for 12.6% of global oil production in 2020, ranking as the top three in the world. It also came second in natural gas production in 2020 with 16.6%, .6 following the US at 23.7%. The combined total of pipeline gas and liquefied natural gas exports accounted for 25.3% of the world's total. At present, the American government has announced that Russia's energy exports won't be targeted by sanctions. But, there is uneasiness in the market and the volatility of oil prices has driven up the price of gasoline. The OECD is an international organization composed of 37 market economies, including the US, Canada, most European countries, Japan, Korea, Australia, and some South American countries. According to a report released by the OECD on January 11, 2022, the annual inflation rate in the U.S. was 6.8% as of November 2021, the highest level in 40 years. The annual inflation rate for the 19 countries in the Eurozone reached 4.9%, a 25-year high. The overall inflation rate in the OECD countries also hit its highest level since May 1996, at 5.8%. From the perspective of commodity classification, the increase in energy prices is the most significant contributing factor to the high inflation rate of the OECD countries. Brent crude oil is particularly light crude oil and a major benchmark price for purchases of oil worldwide. On March 3rd, its price rose to US$119 per barrel at one point, the highest price since 2012. It has surged 41% this year. A Moody's analysis report on February 25th said if the Russia-Ukraine dispute can be resolved in the short term, oil prices may rise moderately and Brent crude futures prices may peak at $110 per barrel. However, if the dispute is prolonged and Russia could be expected to reduce its supply to Europe, the price of Brent crude oil could rise to a maximum of $150 per barrel. In turn, higher energy prices will worsen inflation pressures, shrink consumer disposable income, weaken consumer confidence, and slow down global economic growth. In terms of natural gas, close to 40% of Europe's gas supply comes from Russia. Of this, 55% of Germany's imported pipeline gas comes from Russia. About 18% of the gas currently delivered by Russia to the EU via pipeline goes through Ukraine. There are concerns that military conflict between Russia and Ukraine could damage the transmission pipeline and lead to supply disruptions. The current price of natural gas in Europe has soared by almost 70%. Higher natural gas prices will increase electricity costs. The price of electricity in Germany surged 58% in March and coal and oil prices are also spiking. But there's going to be turbulences on the markets of energy. It's easy to understand. It will happen. It's happening. And it will increase prices. And prices will be paid by consumers. We have to be grateful that all the companies that I have spoken with, both in the US and here, fully support the sanctions, even though they are a considerable burden for them. Although employees are affected and the situation is tense for many companies, no one has said that this was a mistake and the sanctions should stop. Rather, the solidarity is unbroken. And that is a very, very strong signal. I say this with much gratitude to the representatives and to the representatives of German business. The conflict in Ukraine will worsen the strain on the global supply chain. To begin with, global tanker shipping prices have soared. From February 24th to March 2nd, the Baltic Dirty Tanker Index showed a 62% increase. The Baltic Clean Tanker Index rose 34%. 
Reuters reported on February 25th a number of routes ranging from Houston to Rotterdam, from Africa to the UK, from the Arabian Gulf to Japan, and from the Middle East to Japan, all saw a sharp rise in freight rates. The airline industry is severely disrupted by the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Not only is there a large number of flight cancellations, but the spike in international oil prices has added to the flight costs. Both the US and the European Union have announced that they have closed their airspace to Russia. In response, Russia announced on February 28th to ban airline flights from 36 countries from flying through Russian airspace, as these 36 countries have ordered that no Russian flights be allowed into their airspace. It's more economical to fly from Europe to Asian countries such as China, Japan and South Korea via the Russian airspace route. Now that Russia has closed its airspace, aircraft will have to travel longer routes and the cost of fuel will increase significantly due to the detour. In addition to energy supply, the deterioration of the situation in Ukraine will threaten food prices. Russia is the world's number one wheat exporter and Ukraine is the fourth wheat exporter, accounting for 29% of global production. Moreover, they account for 19% of the world's corn supply and 80% of the world's sunflower oil exports. For centuries, Ukraine has been known as the breadbasket of Europe and a major grain supplier to North African, Middle Eastern and Southeast Asian countries. Among them, Egypt and Indonesia have a dependence on Ukrainian wheat of more than 15%. Egypt is the world's largest importer of wheat and the spike in food prices will undoubtedly worsen the situation for Egypt, which is in great political turmoil. In the case of war in Ukraine and Russia, our reserves will drop and instead of supporting our needs for four years ahead, it will only be available for three or two months. The crisis will impact us and we will suffer from wheat shortages. I hope that officials will give desert lands to university graduates to achieve self-sufficiency and we won't be in need. Wheat prices have risen to the highest levels in 10 years, with wheat futures traded on the Chicago Board of Trade surging 8.7% to $9.34 US per bushel. Corn and soybean futures also climbed 5% and 3.9% respectively. Now let's look at Russia. The US and EU announced on February 26 that they would expel some major Russian banks from the SWIFT international settlement system. On March 2nd, the EU published a list of Russian banks concerned. Russia's financial system is in jeopardy as the Russian ruble has been devalued by more than 30% and there are queues for withdrawals and foreign currency runs in many places. SWIFT is the abbreviation for the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. It's an association founded in 1973 and headquartered in Belgium. SWIFT is like a social network of banks. It isn't responsible for the transfer of money, nor does it hold funds, but rather it provides information on the flow of money. For example, when funds are transferred from one account to another, they often have to pass through multiple banks before they reach their final destination. SWIFT covers approximately 11 million banks, brokerages, and other financial institutions in more than 200 countries around the world. The SWIFT system is the most important channel for global financial transactions, as there is no other recognized alternative in the world. The White House released a statement on the 22nd that 80% of Russia's daily foreign exchange transactions were conducted in US dollars, and about half of Russia's international trade was conducted in US dollars. In 2020, trade accounted for about 46% of Russia's annual GDP. If 80% of these transactions were conducted in US dollars, then approximately more than 530 billion US dollars of transactions would be kicked out of the SWIFT system. In addition, the combined profits generated by Russia's oil and gas exports account for more than 40% of Russia's revenues. So imagine the impact of banning Russia from using the SWIFT system. It directly affects Russia's foreign trade, foreign investment, money transfer, central bank's management of the economy, etc. It's equivalent to cutting off Russia's connection with most international financial transactions and cutting off the blood vessels of the Russian economy. It will damage the Russian economy both immediately and in the long term. On February 28th, the ruble plunged by almost 30% against the American dollar, hitting a record low. The Moscow exchange suspended stock market trading continuously from February 28th to avoid capital outflows. 
Before the suspension of trading, the shares of the Russian Federal Reserve Bank and the Russian Foreign Trade Bank, the two largest Russian state-owned banks, fell sharply. On March 2nd, the shares of the Russian Federal Reserve Bank plunged more than 90% on the London Stock Exchange. Russian people are worried about the potential crash of their currency and have rushed to banks, causing a surge of 58 times in demand for the ruble. They are also exchanging foreign currencies in large quantities for fear that they will be depleted by sanctions. We are worried that soon it won't be possible at all. Answering to a question whether we worry that ATMs will run out of cash, we aren't sure about this, as well as we aren't sure about the opposite. That happened before, so people don't have trust. That is why there is a queue. I'm scared that the government will expropriate all the money, or the bank cards will get frozen. I don't know. I've been checking different places, putting in queues and looking for money the second day in row. I haven't managed to withdraw euros yet, so I'm concerned. I need to get the cash somehow. Alongside the swift sanctions, there was another highly powerful economic sanction. On February 26, the US, Europe and Canada issued a joint statement to block the Russian central bank from accessing its international reserves, worth 630 billion US dollars. It took Russia years to build up its reserves, converting revenues from selling oil and gas into securities, bank deposits and gold. The Wall Street Journal reports that restricting the Russian central bank's access to its reserves could be the most powerful weapon in the West's financial arsenal. As mentioned earlier, Europe imports about a quarter of its oil and more than a third of its natural gas from Russia. Right now, the West's sanctions against Russia haven't yet involved energy, but if Russia is sanctioned on selling oil and gas in Europe, or if Russia cuts off the supply in retaliation, do the US and the EU have a plan to deal with it? Reuters quoted sources as saying that the US and its allies are considering releasing oil reserves. The U.S. is the world's largest oil producer, holding huge shale oil resources, and was once a net exporter of crude oil in 2019. However, the Biden administration doesn't support the development of shale oil. On his first day in office, he pulled the plug on the Keystone Fast Track pipeline to Canada, which had been planned to carry 830,000 barrels of oil per day from Alberta, Canada to Nebraska. Because of the high cost of shale oil extraction and limited reserves, U.S. crude oil companies don't seem to want to produce at full speed. As a result, U.S. crude oil production is expected to grow only by 2-3% to 3 in 2022. In addition, the Biden administration has imposed restrictions on oil and gas drilling on federal lands. It's not yet known whether the expensive oil prices caused by the Russia-Ukraine conflict will force the U.S. government to open restrictions on oil exploration. Data from 2020 and 2021 shows that Europe imports an average of 170 billion cubic meters of natural gas from Russia, accounting for about 35% of Europe's annual natural gas consumption. The US annual LNG or liquefied natural gas exports in 2022 are expected to reach 83 million tons or 117 billion cubic meters, which would only account for about 68% of Russia's supply to Europe, even if all of it is supplied to Europe. But in reality, more than half of it will be supplied to Asian markets under long-term agreements. On February 28, the European think tank in the field of international economics, Bruegel Institute, released a new report that concluded that if Russia completely cut off the flow of natural gas to Europe, the EU would need to reduce demand by at least 10-15% to 15 to cope. If the EU can afford to rotate power cuts or limit industrial gas use, it could afford to spend next winter without importing Russian gas, while avoiding serious damage to the European economy, the report said. Senior market analysts at Reuters aren't optimistic about the analysis. In their opinion, some European countries can have imports of spare natural gas from Qatar in the US, and Japan and South Korea can transfer some of their surplus offshore natural gas shipments to Europe. However, the global natural gas market as well as other European pipeline gas suppliers such as Algeria and Norway are already producing and exporting at full capacity. They have signed long-term contracts that will limit the amount of gas that can be redirected to Europe from other parts of the world. Therefore, in the next 12 months there is little that can be done to meet the EU's gas demand in a normal year in the absence of Russian gas. The Chinese Communist Party has been dancing around its position towards the Ukraine-Russia crisis. 
Some of its state-owned banks have joined in the sanctions against Russia. On February 26th, Bloomberg reported that the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China has stopped issuing letters of credit related to Russian commodities. On February 28th, Reuters reported that the Singapore branch of the Bank of China has stopped financing transactions involving Russian oil and companies. From an economic perspective, economies around the world have been hit, but China may be relatively less impacted. As mentioned in a previous episode, Russia and China have signed some stunning energy sales agreements prior to the Winter Olympics. In 2021, energy trade between the two countries increased to more than 140 billion US dollars and is expected to further increase to 200 billion by 2024. The two countries are also working on a major pipeline that will cross Mongolia to supply Russian energy to China. In addition, Chinese state-owned energy companies and government-backed investment funds have made significant investments in the extraction of LNG in the Arctic. Since 2013, the CCP has acquired a significant interest in two Arctic LNG projects of a Russian gas company, one with a 30% stake and the other with a 20% stake. Should Western sanctions against Russia prevent the world from buying Russian gas, then Communist China will be virtually the only buyer. As a monopolist in the buyer's market, Beijing will no longer need to please and court Putin in the future as it once did. In the future, the CCP will have a large say in the price of Russian energy purchases. In terms of food, the CCP seems to have found alternative countries for food imports well in advance of the Russia-Ukraine war. During the Winter Olympics, Russia and the CCP signed an agreement to allow Russian wheat and barley to be imported into China. This is the opposite of what is happening in the world. The rest of the world will face problems of rising energy costs, possible energy shortages and power outages, plus continued deterioration of the supply chain. Yet, as the world's factory, China will likely have easy access to relatively cheap energy and use it to make more inexpensive products, thus increasing its dominant power over the global market. This red state has lost its previously strong economic growth since the US-China trade war. The CCP is looking for opportunities. The previous American government had extended goodwill to Russia and appeared to be looking to unite Russia against the CCP. But this direction was soon discontinued by the change in the White House. The alliance between Russia and the CCP will further complicate the future landscape in the world. In the chaos of war, Western countries should stay vigilant to the covert actions of the Chinese Communist Party.